Ladies and gentlemen, Hot 97 Morning Show, we uh, try to get involved in things happening in your world as much as possible. Uh, this conversation started uh, several, well, I'll call it about a week ago, when uh, a man, candidate for mayor, Ross Baraka, came by the program, uh, reached out to me. Uh, we brought him up on Hot 97, and uh, it was only right that we now bring his opponent, uh, Shavar Jeffries, also running for mayor of Newark. Yes, sir. Um, let's get right to it. Um, you are seen as the uh, person who is... Um, how do I say, um, their trajectory and their career has been all politics as usual, uh, in with big business, uh, mm -hmm. not involved in the community, not active, where your opponent, Ross Baraka, is seen as somebody uh, who taught in schools and has been involved in what's going on in Newark for 20 years. Um, what do you have to say to that? I think that's totally false. Uh, in fact, for 15 years, I'm a civil rights attorney, and I've represented poor people, uh, people of color, immigrants, women, in the city of Newark for 15 years for free, uh, representing domestic violence victims when no one else would help them. And I would represent them and make sure they could be free from violence in their home. Representing children denied educational services, special education services. I represent them again for free uh, to make sure they receive the education that they deserve. Representing people of color discriminating on the job because of their skin. I represent them for free uh, to make sure they could uh, make money and uh, not and be free from discrimination. Uh, representing people of color denied voting opportunities. Representing people of color racially profiled on the New Jersey Turnpike. Uh, representing gays and lesbians for equal uh, uh, and fair play in terms of marriage. Uh, I've been representing people for free for 15 years, so it's totally false and a lie, and I don't know where that characterization is coming from. In fact, uh, my opponent's the one who's been running for office for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I've been representing poor people for free as a civil rights attorney. I spent some time as an assistant attorney general uh, uh, for the state of New Jersey, fighting for safe for streets and neighborhoods, fighting to help families facing mortgage fraud and foreclosure to escape that. I, I was a board president for the Boys and Girls Club of Newark, mm -hmm. providing after school services for kids. I founded a public charter school in Newark, Team Academy. I founded a nonprofit called I, I Reform to train parents and help parents uh, so fight do you for think, their kids. Do you think this characterization maybe comes because people don't know you? I don't Oof. think that characterization is there. I just don't know where you're getting that from. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been talking to Norcas for 15 years, and I've been campaigning for 20 months. And they know me as somebody who's been fighting for them. Now, it is true I'm not one who's always interested in being in front of the camera uh, and, and speaking to large groups uh, in front of people's mm -hmm. faces. I'm actually the person who wants to get things done. And the old folks used to say an empty wagon makes a lot of noise. And what they meant is that sometimes the people making the most noise are getting the fewest things done. And sometimes the people who are making less noise are actually getting the most done. But I, that characterization just has no... no no basis in fact so right now um i think the last poll that i i saw had uh your opponent in the lead is that also because maybe he's been more vocal as you say an empty wagon he's been on television more he's been more active in politics and people know him or why is that i don't know what poll you're referring to there's been no independent polls uh, in our campaign mm -hmm. he and his people support him, commission a poll, and then may get it to you. Okay, that, so then maybe that may, that's what I'm looking at. There have not been any independent polls. That's like asking a Yankee fan who he thinks is going to win the World Series. Uh, so there's been no independent polls. And what I know is we have amazing support in all parts of the city. What I know is we have the congressman who represents our city, who's a strong supporter of ours. What I know is four of the Democratic Party chair people for the city of Newark support us. Uh, we have support everywhere. Uh, our record of results speaks for itself. And unfortunately, uh, my opponent has been a South Ward councilman the last four years, murders up 70% under his watch. Unemployment is up. Foreclosures are up. Development is down. He has no plan, frankly, to deal with that. I'm proud during my time as Assistant Attorney General, I actually helped oversee the crime plan for the state of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, we expanded drug treatment, after school programs, youth development, zero tolerance around guns and gangs. We reduced crime throughout the state. Uh, so there's a dramatic difference in the performance of so what we've done. Who is uh, Shavar Jeffries for people who don't know? Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Um, talk to us. Well, I'm from the South Ward of Newark, and I grew up like a lot of kids. You know, my mom was 19 when she gave birth to me, uh, you know, and she wasn't ready. And so the first eight years of my life, I was with a bunch of different relatives. Uh, when I went to live with my mom, I was very excited. That was the beginning of the rest of my life. Uh, but unfortunately, she'd meet a gentleman who'd become abusive, and he would kill her. And, mm. and my father popped up after my mom was killed, said he was going to raise his son. Came home a few months later. He was gone. No mm. note, no goodbye, no anything. Mm. And the reason I'm here today is because my grandmother took me in. She put me in the Boys and Girls Club of Newark on Hawthorne Avenue. I would receive a scholarship that I don't know where it came from. It just fell into my lap to get a college prep education. Mm. I'd be the first in my family to go away to college, let alone to go uh, beyond college. I went to law school. And I've dedicated my life for 15 years. That's why this thing about representing business and is ridiculous. And it's a lie and it's, it's absurd. And I don't mm. know where you're coming from. Mm. Because what I did is I came back home and I've given back for 15 years for free. 
to the community that gave me everything. I came back to the Boys mm-hmm. and Girls Club as the president uh, and, to, and, and, and eliminated a deficit of $1 million in one year and expanded from mm-hmm. three clubs to five. I founded a public charter school because education changed my life. Too many schools in Newark weren't working well. So for free, as a volunteer, I founded so a public you're, charter you're, school. So you're telling me right now that Ross is the one who is more entrenched in the politics as usual in Newark than yourself. All I'm saying is I'm the, I'm the child of a 19-year-old parent that nobody knew and a father that nobody knew. And I'm saying the councilman has an amazing family, an iconic family. His, his parents are legends in our community. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's a kind of status and privilege most kids in Newark aren't born into. Mm-hmm. He's been running for office for 20 years. There's a reason Sharp James is supporting him. There's a reason Ken Gibson is supporting him. There's a reason the traditional political people uh, are supporting him mm-hmm. because he's rooted in that. He has his brother on the payroll. We got to get beyond this cult politics of nepotism. That undermines our growth. Mm-hmm. I've only been in politics for four years. I've been representing poor people for free for 15. I've been advocating for poor people for free for 15. Now, am I one to be marching in front of people's face all the time? No. That's just not who right? you That's are. not who I am. I'm, at, I'm about solving problems and getting things done. But the record speaks for itself. This idea of representing business and all that is a lie. It's untrue. There's no basis in fact. If anybody has any evidence for it, I'd love to hear it. Mm-hmm. All I've done is represent people for free for my entire life. And that's what I'm going to dedicate my whole life to. But the, I guess the future of Newark does depend on business relationships. Absolutely. Absolutely. It does depend on big business coming in and providing jobs. And talk to us about your plan for, for Newark and the financial uh, status. Of Newark. Well, the first piece is safety. Uh, we're not going to get the investment and growth that we need until we have safe streets and neighborhoods. And when you have 111 murders in a city of 280,000, over 350 carjackings, and unfortunately in the South Ward, where my opponent hails from, where we have more murders anywhere else, 45 of the 111 and more carjackings and crime, you don't get investment. So we have to stabilize safety. And I can have a record of doing that. And w- g- give me three points on how you will go about doing that. Because, you know, I, I always believe people, when they have something to be proud of, they have a job, they put some money in their pocket, and, you know, some self esteem they're less likely to want to go out and commit crime. Um, talk to us about how you're going to stabilize that. Like, what what exactly is going to happen? And what do you expect the people of Newark, if you are to get uh, this office, this seat, what do you need them to do to be Absolutely. responsible? Well, first, we want to invest in prevention. I mean, the best way to reduce crime is to prevent it. So more after-school programs for our young people, making sure our schools Keep are Keep them busy. Keep them busy. Keep them in school. Okay. Too many kids are dropping out. Keep them busy in after-school space. Uh, when I was at the state, we expanded the drug court program, which provided treatment uh, for those who have an addiction rather than imprisonment. On the enforcement side, we have zero tolerance around guns and gangs, too many gu- guns in our community. And then we invest in reentry. So when folks are transitioning back in, job training, drug treatment, help with license restrictions and other kinds of restrictions so people can reenter uh, more effectively. Uh, also, more intelligence and technology where we're really targeting those people driving mm-hmm. crime, but creating pathways to doing the right thing for those who want to uh, get on the right path. Now, I, I jammed your opponent up when he was here, too, because I wanted him to tell me the negatives. Because sure. and I, you know, I done my research where, you know, he wrote a letter for a gang member and he was he was a uh, forthright in saying the reason he did that. Um how are you going to deal in a community where there are uh, a lot there's a lot of crime and it may result in you locking up more young black men because they're out there committing crime and not wanting to put in the work how are you going to deal with that well we're going to arrest fewer but we're going to arrest the right people so anybody who's a drug user I don't want you arrested I want you in treatment okay and I, and I expanded the drug court program when I was at the state uh, much of the treatment is paid for through Medicaid we're going to we're going to divert people to treatment who are nonviolent offenders I don't want them in the criminal justice system however if you have a gun, you're involved in violence, you will be arrested under Jeffrey's administration. You're going to be removed from our community. Talk about it. I've been listening to moms for a year and a half who worried about their children being killed on the way home from school. Moms, when the sun goes down, they're prisoners in their own home. I have a wife and two kids. I can't let my kids play outside mm-hmm. where I live in the South Ward. We don't deserve to live like this. I don't want anybody to live like that. So if you want to do the right thing, we're going to help you. Nonviolent offenders, we're going to divert away uh, from punishment because much of the people arrested are the wrong people being arrested for nonviolent offenses. Okay. But if you're involved in violence, you're going to be arrested relentlessly. Uh, you're going to be removed from the city of Newark, and we're going to change our culture around violence in our city. And and let's go a step deeper, because I know a lot of young people um, listening right now, they have to make choices on their in their neighborhood, right? You know, their neighborhood might be, have a lot of, uh, of other young people, gangs and things like that, doing things, and they feel like they have no choice. They're on their way to school, they're getting jumped, they're dealing with violence, and just to almost be safe, they get forced into, you know, uh, a life of crime just trying to fit in. Absolutely. How are you going to deal with that? Because that's a big deal. Because some people can't move out of the neighborhoods that they're from. That's right. And again, this is my home. My family's been in Newark 100 years, and I grew up here. And part of it is, frankly, we have to begin to take gangs out of our communities from the top down. Take responsibility for our young people. 
We take responsibility for our young people, but we also can't allow gangs to take over our neighborhoods where kids feel like you have to make these choices. A kid should not be in an environment where they have to choose uh, which gang they're going to join just to survive. Because gangs, if we're going to be real about it, they're organized around drugs, guns, and death and murder. Mm -hmm. And we have to be clear about that. And fear. And, and fear. And we have to be clear about that. We can't apologize for it. You and me, you're not going to have mayor trying to get a truce. We're going to say, we want to help you do the right thing. We want to support you because we love you. And the gangs are not designed to build you up. They're designed to destroy us. We want to help you. We want to help those But that means working with police. And then you have the whole, you know, uh, stop snitching campaigns, and they, which I don't support. I feel like if you ain't doing crime and you're not involved in that lifestyle, you better talk to the police. Because it ain't snitching if you're not involved. That's right. It's That's protecting right. your family and making sure, look, I'm a taxpaying citizen. That's the right. police is on my payroll, right? That's right? You understand? So if you're doing some crime in my area, I'm talking. But how do you change that culture? Because in our communities, too often, we don't uh, uh, participate and communicate. That's right. Well, again, part of it is protection. I mean, a lot of times people who disclose information uh, are killed uh, or are hurt in other kind of ways. So the city has to be and the government has to be able to protect them. Another way you do it is through more effective intelligence-based policing. And so if you do intelligence-based policing more effective, then the police can actually gather better information about who's doing what. Mm -hmm. And when you have lazy cops who aren't trained right and don't have the right intelligence, then you have to depend even more on the community. Uh, and then if you have a community that's in fear, you're not going to get the information. So more effective policing. And again, these are things I've done already. See, it's not just about talking about it and giving a march about it. You actually have to have the skill set to create a different result. And so these are things we did at the state level, and that is why we're able to reduce violent crime three years in a row throughout the state, and that's what I'm going to bring to the city. Shavar Jeffries, he's running for mayor in Newark. Uh, let's talk business. Let's talk money. Um, like you said, you want to focus on safety because then now businesses are attracted to Newark and they want to bring come there because now they can bring people to work for them and That's they can right. bring their families there and so on and so forth. What Talk about the relationships and the people who support you right now that um, have those same interests because for Newark to thrive, there has to be some local infrastructure there. Well, that's right. And we want we want existing businesses to expand. So we invest in seed capital for existing because not only the large businesses, but the small businesses. Because okay. most of our job growth is through small businesses. Got it. We're going to invest in seed capital uh, so that local entrepreneurs who have a great idea can have the resources to build their business. We're going to invest in technical assistance. Some folks have great ideas, but they can use help with cash flow management, profit margin. Mm. We're investing in incubation. Oftentimes for a small business, the, the HR support, the legal support, the accounting support is stuff that they can't afford. So we can provide incubation services allow small businesses to grow and expand. Uh, we're also going to depoliticize government. What does that mean? Well, that, for example, if you got to uh, pay the piper or grease somebody's palms or pay for a lobbyist in order to get a building permit through okay. the city of North, right. which, right. is, which is the political culture of patronage, then that hurts small businesses. And are you saying that's what's happening right now? That's exactly what's happened. That's happened for a long time period of time. And if we keep electing the same politicians mm. who have family members on the payroll, who have multiple public jobs, where the people pay for them to have a tax. Sound like you're taking shots, sir. I'm describing facts. And sometimes the truth hurts. I'm just describing facts. It is true. My opponent has his brother on the, on the payroll. It is true. My opponent makes mm. a quarter million dollars in two public jobs that the people pay for. It is true uh, that the people pay for them to have a taxpayer-funded car when murder's up 70%, cops laid off, programs for kids. Those are facts. I respect my opponent. Amazing family. But we have to be true about facts. And what I'm saying is that kind of culture mm. is part of the reason the state is threatening to take over the budget. That part of that culture is why we don't have the entrepreneurial development programs we need, the after-school programs we need, the job training programs we need the offices on the corner to make our streets safe we and, you're, and you're telling us right now that you are the person from the of the people because you've worked with the people not in politics you're not of a political family you're not of politics you're of helping the people being someone as you said earlier as we were talking that you've given your services as a lawyer for free to help people. I'm, people will make their own opinion. I'm just describing the facts of who I am and what I've done for 15 years for free. I graduated from Columbia Law School. I'm very proud of the top of my class. Almost everybody I mm. went to law school with went to big firms, big corporations. They're making millions of dollars. What I did is I went back to the South Ward of Newark. I started representing black and brown and poor people for free. And I've been doing that for 15 years. I became the president of the Boys and Girls Club of Newark for free. Founded the Team Academy Public Charter School for free. Founded I Reform, which trains parents to fight for their kids for free. Represented domestic violence victims that no one else would talk about, would support for free. Working with NAACP on racial profiling. Uh, Newarkers facing uh, affordable, uh, facing foreclosure uh, uh, and mortgage fraud. Uh, working with Frank Hutchins and the Newark Hutt Tennis Coalition for affordable housing. That's who I am. That's what I've been right. doing. Those are just facts. People so make their opinion, but you, those are the facts. You watch House of Cards? 
I don't watch that that much, no. You, I, you're you're aware watching. of it. You're yes, aware of Kevin it. Spacey. Yeah, it's a, it's a great program. And the reason why I ask you is because in that program, it's, it's um, I don't want to say it's true, but it's the way, as me as an outsider to politics and, you know, just watching how all businesses move, whether it's a media business, music business, uh, you know, the pharmaceutical business. Um People do favors for one another. Mm -hmm. um, there is, a, as you put it, greasing of palms to get things done. And now you are saying that, look, I'm not about that culture. That's not what I'm about. I'm about helping the people. But once you get this seat, when you get this seat, if you get this seat as mayor of Newark, you are going to have to keep people happy so you can get things done. How are you going to navigate that? Because, I mean, and I'm learning here. Yeah. The way you've explained it to me, you're the person coming in from the outside. Your opponent, Ross Baraka, whose family's been active and he's been in politics and running for office for 20 years, he's on the inside. How are you going to navigate this? Well, again, I mean, you, you, you look, you got to find principal compromise. In politics, you have to compromise, right? Because you need the council to vote on things. You may mm -hmm. need things from the state and you have the governor and you have a state legislature. You may need things from the county, from the federal government. So you have to find principal compromise. But for me, that means compromise rooted in the people's interest, not my own. Not my family, not my political supporters, not the donors who supported me, rooted in the people's interest. For example, I believe in extended learning time because our kids are on the street in that 3 to 5.30 window. If somebody said, hey, I don't support going to 5, but I'll do 4, okay, deal, let's do 4. Three, 4 is better than 3. Mm -hmm. But if it's, well, I'll do 4 only if you give a contract uh, to my brother and their sister, I can't do that because that's part of the culture that is destroying our city. Who's going to dislike you the most if you become mayor? Who's going to dislike me the most are the people who've done very well in the status quo that's been rooted in patronage and self-dealing and self-interest uh, because that is precisely why the but city— But these are the people who control Newark right now. That, and the people on May 13th are going to decide if they want to go in a different direction. Look, mm -hmm. I, look, I'm not a politician. I got a wife and two kids. If the people want to keep doing what they've been doing, then that's their choice. If they want to change and turn the page, then we're here and we're going to be committed to the things that, that I'm talking about. Is there anyone, in, including your opponent, that you would say, listen, I don't necessarily agree with how you moved before I became mayor, assuming you become mayor, but you would still reach out to them and say, look, I want you involved because... I don't like how things were happening, but if you change your ways and I and you agree to work with how I want to move things, I want you involved. Are there uh, is Ross Baraka somebody that you would reach out to, or are there any other political people uh, currently in power in Newark that you would reach out to? Absolutely, all of them. I mean, cause, I mean, Ross Baraka loves the city. He's from an amazing, iconic family. He's been fighting for twenty years in a variety of different ways. You keep saying that iconic family thing because his father is an icon. I mean, he is. His father. But you're putting it out there because you're using that as. I want to be no. I want to be clear because unfortunately, sometimes in these campaigns, everything becomes contentious. A popularity contest. It can become well, it become that, and then it also becomes contentious. And what I'm saying is, I just disagree about who's most qualified for this position. I'm but I but I don't dislike him or his family. All. I'm a Knicks fan. I love Mike Woodson. <laughs> Yo, Nets, man. What? Come on. I've been a Knicks fan my whole life. Come on, bro. Nets, man. I've been, what are we I doing? go back to Johnny Newman, Gerald. Listen, Wilkins. this interview's over. Pick my back, <laughs> Bernard King. I'm playing with you. You know, but you know, but if you're not winning. They're going to say, we like you and you're a good guy. Phil Jackson's need, going to do that right they're now. They're going to do that. And the people in Newark, I'm saying, we, we love you, brother, but we're not seeing the results and we're going to go in a different direction. So I would love to So work you're saying you're going to Phil Jackson this. You're going to walk in and Axe Man cometh. Everyone's out if they ain't not following no, the no, program. No, no, no. Let me not. Not everybody's out because we got to keep people who are experienced and know what they're doing. Right, but right. if you're not about change and serving the people in an evidence-based, result-based way, then absolutely we're going to have to make adjustments. Education. Yes, sir. Uh, funding education. Where is this public education system going in Newark? Well, we got to make sure our, our traditional public schools are very strong. And again, I'm very happy to be that you know part of my civil rights work. I've worked with the Education Law Center. We've sued the state repeatedly to put literally billions of dollars in the Newark Public Schools and school finance case. That's another volunteer work I did as a civil rights attorney. So we have to continue to fight for our funds. When I was the president of the school board, another volunteer position representing parents and community. The state cut our budget. I took the state to court. We got $30 million back and saved jobs and programs. So we have to have extended learning time in our schools. Make sure these principals are on point and great having an internationally normed curriculum so we're preparing our kids for a global economy we got to have every effective teachers mm -hmm. uh, in every classroom and then I'm also a believer in parental choice that parents ought to make decisions about what school serves their child whether that's a traditional public school or it's a public charter school I believe parents should make those decisions not politicians all right Shavar Jeffries is there anything we didn't touch on today that you want to make sure that people hear before you walk up out of here because how much time before May 13th you said? May 13th yes sir that's about 20 days 
So what do you want people to know? I want people to know uh, that the future of the city of Newark is on the line and that if we're going to change the city, we're going to need to change the leadership. And the passion I have to serve is rooted in what the city of Newark did for me. That as a young child, after my mom was killed and my father left me and I didn't know what I could believe and what I could trust, the people of Newark gave me opportunity. And I've dedicated my life for 15 years. These are just the facts. And as people do their homework, uh, uh, you know, I've been representing people for 15 years for free to give back to this community and we have a record of results. And the people need actual change and they need results when it comes to safety when it comes to job opportunities, when it comes to education of our kids. And that's what we're going to work to provide at this in, in the city. I, I'm not uh, partial to either one of you. Ross, I met him for the first time when he came up here. I just I knew some of his people. You reached out, and I appreciate whomever on your camp listened to the program and, and saw the interview and reached out. Um, but I, I will say this, and, you know, um, I've been around the hood for a long time. You know, grew up there, still deal with it, working here at the radio station. We get out in the community a lot. Um, the biggest problem that we have is taking responsibility for our actions, taking responsibility for our young people, right? Um, we oftentimes l have a blind eye when it comes to our children mm -hmm. acting like fucking idiots in these streets, mm -hmm. right? Um, we have a blind eye and or don't want to do the work and want to put the work that needs to be done to raise a child on public schools or the government or whatever, and that's our problem. And no matter who becomes mayor of Newark, the biggest problem out there is people taking responsibility for their neighborhoods That's and right. standing up to the terrorism. That's right. Right, because what happens with gangs in these neighborhoods is terrorism. That's right. People are afraid, and they don't want to start problems because once they start a problem, they just they can't deal with that, and they can't deal with the violence and, and the and the and the and the fear that comes with that. So they just go on about their day and hope they make it. That's right. If Newark's gonna survive and grow and, and and people coming out of there are going to have uh, more and more opportunity people have to take responsibility for their for their home for their block for their neighborhood and their city and they have to look at the shit that's wrong and be honest about it because there's a lot wrong that's in right. newark absolutely and for it to be as close to it as it is to manhattan and not be able to benefit from the fact that manhattan is now basically pushing uh low-income families out and people don't want to move to newark right i talk to people in east new york and be like shit i ain't moving to newark <laughs> fuck that right. Right? right that's that's not a good place no that's 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 unfortunate yeah so um i appreciate you coming thank by you. thank you for um having me. and uh like i said to ross baraka and any other other politicians that come by the program to get the ears of the young people and, and the hip-hop um culture reach out communicate with us right because we're we're on the front lines in a different way with music and entertainment. We're not on the front lines like a lot of the politicians and activists in the community that are out there making sure kids get a meal, making sure kids, you know, uh, have somebody to just, you know, uh, give them a smile when they're on their right. way to school. Because that's that's, right. that's what you guys do, right? That's we right. just, they turn on the radio and they hear us or they see us in a club or, you know, we play their favorite song. So reach out to us Absolutely. and communicate with us because we, we definitely can't keep a hold of everything that's going on. But if y'all share the information with us, then we try to do our part. Well, what you do is critical. I mean, you know, Harold Cruz used to write that you can't have political transformation without cultural transformation. That's right. And I grew up on, you know, some of y'all might be too young, but, you know, KRS-One. Of course. What you know, mean? Tribe, Rakim. Young man, how old you, you know, think I am? Huh? How old you, you, you look very am? young. You look early 30s. I'm about yeah. to be 40, bro. Yeah, I'm 40, brother. I'm okay. Well, you look, well so, whatever you eat, and I need been, to eat. And I've been in radio uh, 23 years. Well, you look great. Whatever you so, eat, and I need to eat. Listen, bro. But my point, though, is that. Is, Get some sleep. Is the music I grew up on really helped help frame my me, consciousness? Me as well. And now we have a different kind of yes. aesthetic in our music. That's and I right. think we got to hold our artists accountable too. I think we, I think we absolutely have to hold our artists accountable, but we also have to, in this world, hold our consumers accountable, yeah. right? Um, a lot of people, we talk about those '90s hip hop albums and even the '80s hip hop albums that were more vocal about what was going on in the community and things like that. But that was at a time when people were purchasing music. That's right. Right, so the artists that made that music could feed their families from making that music. Now we live in a time where people don't purchase music, they steal music. Mm. So for an artist to survive, they end up making music that people will actually buy or doing concerts that people will actually pay for a ticket to go to. And a lot of a lot of times, it that's not um, activist related content. It's, you know, a superficial, bubblegum, floofy, floofy, fluffy content. They just want to go see. I just want to go see Beyonce. Uh, you know, I just want to go have a good time. Fuck all that. I hear it all the time. Oh, you trying to drop knowledge? Ain't nobody got time for that. Because they don't want to hear it. Right. right. So what they end up doing is when you try to hit them with something, they end up turning it off. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and and you know culture. why that is? Mm. Is because they don't want to look in the mirror. Mm. Because mm. that music becomes a reflection of how fucked up your shit is. Mm. And people don't want to look in the mirror. They want to they wanna pop a pill and mm. act like everything's okay. Mm. They want to pop a Xanax or go get a prescription drug and just put their kid in public school and act like everything's okay. Mm. So that goes back to the conversation we was having about taking responsibility for your shit. Yes, and sir. people don't want to take responsibility for their shit. Mm. They want to push it off on the government. They want to push it off on their neighbor. They want to push it off on public schools. Mm -hmm. So that music I doesn't get made because people ain't going to buy it. Mm. And the record label stops signing it, mm. and it stops getting made. But then it becomes a cycle because then the culture then just reinforces. The and then the Kanye West marries a Kardashian, uh -oh. and then Jay Z's the richest <laughs> man, and we can't get a hold of them no more. And they like shit. I tried. I did my part. I'm going on vacation. You can always get a hold of me though. You call me. I'm here. So you gotta have that problem with me. Shavar Jeffries right, on the Hot Nights Morning Show. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. All Appreciate right. you.